The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, Brian Broaddus, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Monday, October 3rd, 2022, season 18, episode number 42. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break. We are live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star, and we are presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And, man, this is becoming a normal thing on Mondays. Cowboys get another win. They win against uh, the Washington Commanders this weekend, 25-10. to uh, Now moved to 3-1 on the season, sitting in second place in the division. And uh, lots to be looking forward to. We will get into it a little later this week because now they get into a part of the schedule where these next two games, we're going to really see what they got and what they're working with this season. But certainly for what they've done right now, very good for them to be sitting at a spot of three and one. All right, let's start first with stories of the game. Let's go around the table. Tell me what you think was the story of this game. Nick, let's start with you. Oh, man, I'd like to go third because there's a lot of stories. But uh, Give me the biggest. What's the biggest story of the game? The biggest story of the game is that the, the defense is just – just annihilating nasty they're nasty that's what we've we've been talking about all year and they are i mean i i I said it in my column you know i don't think this is a bend but don't break i mean because they don't even bend that much they they mean they they are really really good and they are helping this offense which offense has been okay um but they don't have to be that great because that's how good the defense is I think, to me, the story of this game is the fact you ran the ball for two yards a carry and were managed to win this football game, you know? And I think that has a lot to do. And, you know, you know, you look at the – it was really nice to see Michael Gallup out there playing again. And, and, and it was really – I think they've – when you look at what Kellen Moore and Mike McCarthy have done with this offense, I mean, I think they're doing everything they can. If you'd have told me that, like I said – two yards of carry that they were going to win this game, I would have said no way because that then that would have put a lot of pressure. But like Cooper Rush for the most time, I don't think this was Cooper Rush's best games of mm-hmm. the victories they've had. You know, there were times he was throwing off his back foot. I think there were some problems in the offensive line. I think Tyler Smith had some problems. I, I know that you know, Biotish had some problems. Heck, even Zach Martin had some problems along the way. This was going to be a difficult game because of that front. But they find a way. They just find a way. I, I'll tell you, a huge play in the game. If this game was really, really close, that tackle that your kicker made after mm-hmm. the uh, after the block extra point, that saved you two points right there. You know, and you're thinking about in a game, you're like, man, this looks like it's going to come down to the end. You know, they're going to maybe make a play. You're going to have to make a play. But you know, g- give credit to, to guys like Diggs. You know, give a lot of credit to the kid coming in and playing in the nickel bland. You know, the way he was able to step up. It, it's just Nick's right. It's a it's one of those defenses you were kind of like going, yeah, okay, it's it's good. It's got a chance. But the way that they attack you in different ways, you could see the fear in, in, in Wentz's eyes when he was throwing balls to, in, that, in that football game. This isn't necessarily the story of the game, but I think that some credit should be given to Brett Maher and what he's been doing so far um, because he's been keeping in games as well. Being able, and he, It's gotten to the point where now you're not necessarily holding your breath every time he's about to make a kick. So to this point, he's done a great job, and he keeps you in there scoring three points at a time, but it adds up, and then once the offense is finally able to get into the end zone, it adds up points for them. So just wanted to give credit to him and what he's been doing, especially after last year and what we went through with the kicker, kicker position. Yeah, I think finally the Cowboys have a kicker that you don't look at every kick, including extra points, and wonder, are they going to make this? Like You're, you're getting comfortable. I know I'm getting comfortable. And the, the longer it is, the more comfortable I seem to get. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, he's going to kick this one. He's going to make this one. But, yeah, it's a it's a really good situation. Brian, going back to what you said, I thought it was interesting because, actually, you you know, you grew up, in obviously, in football. 
and I watching grew up football. Watching this team play for twenty right. years from nineteen seventy two to nineteen ninety two, yeah. And being a guy, Nick, all of us kind of other than Amber, like I, you didn't grow up watching football, but mm-hmm. from the time you grew up watching football, you always hear there are two things you got to do in every in every game. Yeah. You got to run the ball and you got to stop the run. Yeah. And the Cowboys did neither. Like the yeah. Cowboys in this game, yeah. they 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 only averaged two yards a carry, as you said. They allowed the the Washington Commanders to average five point three yards per carry, and they still won by double digits. That to me is is where I look at this game, and I'm like, they're winning games that they you, that you would look at the numbers and you'd be like, how did they win a game like that? Yeah. Uh, in a in a situation where you would think that's what teams need to be able to do against them, you got to be able to run the ball because you're not going to have much time to throw. And somehow, even trying to run the ball and running the ball as effectively as Washington did, they still couldn't get more than 10 points. Yeah, and I I think that they always talk about, Bill Parcells would say, the hidden yards. Washington's penalties killed them. Mm -hmm. Those were some huge, huge calls in that game because that made up for the lack of what your running game was. I mean, they figured out, you know, especially in that second half that, you know what, it's going to be okay if we max protect this thing and throw the ball down the field and let them get tangled up with a Cowboy receiver. But every time that the the commanders had a negative penalty on offense, it killed a drive for them. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, whether it was a holding penalty, they had a 13-yard run get called back because of a holding penalty. So, you know, you talk about the turnovers, uh, you know, the interceptions they were able to get. And then the the negative plays that because of the hidden yards with the penalties for the commanders, that that more than made up for your lack of a running game in this one for sure. Yeah, and when you look at though when they really needed to run, I mean they, they there there was times where they they obviously struggled for most of the game. But you look at the first drive after uh, Washington takes the lead seven to six, and now you're thinking, all right. This is going to be this is going to be a tough one because the Cowboys are one dimensional. They come out on the seventy five yard drive and just here here are the running plays: Zeke for three, you know, and then it's Zeke for two, Zeke for six, Pollard for five, Pollard for four, Pollard for nine, Zeke for five, touchdown. So they did run the ball pretty well on that drive yeah. to 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 you know go seventy five yards like that. Obviously, it wasn't as consistent, but you know that I thought that drive was huge because they got him a touchdown to Gallup. And kind of got the momentum back on their favorite before halftime. You know, yeah. and I felt that, and you mentioned penalties just now, Brian. But I, I felt that this was one game that the penalties were in the Cowboys' favor this time. And it, you sh- it yeah. rarely ever happens that way, yeah. whether it's a wrong call or the right call. It the just discipline. it usually happens in the f- bad for the Cowboys. It, it goes uh, against them. And this was the one game that watching, I'm like. Dang, okay, they got saved by that one. Yes, some were the right calls, but just regardless, it just worked out in Cowboys' favor this time. And it it was just a nice break in that aspect because we rarely ever get that. Yeah, and, you know, let's give the Cowboys a little bit of credit for some of those because those penalties that that saved those interceptions, I mean, what's – Mugging, is that okay? Yeah, sure, go for I it. I can go for that? Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I Don't use the other word. I had a word in the press box that Derek was like, no, thank you. But um, <laughs> they were mugging them up there. You they know, were, I mean, yeah. they, they really were. And 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 winning off the line, that's what Gallup, you talked about. Gallup really helps, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, those those players, you know, and, and then on the flip side, the, the Cowboys secondary guys were, were covering them. You know, I, I thought – we we put Gallup as our player of the game, and we did it today on the website. Gallup, a player of the game, but you know for everything that he did and the penalties he drew. But Trayvon Diggs was amazing. Yeah, he was. yeah, that was. Yeah. He really, yeah. I I can tell you, McLaurin is pretty good about other corners. He don't want anything to do with Diggs. No. Diggs has his number, and he has for three games. And 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 Anthony Brown's doing pretty good. Not not great, but. It was a little bit of a struggle he yesterday. Was, yeah. He was. Struggle bus yeah. yesterday. He was. Yeah. But we talked about tackling. I thought they did a nice job when they got the ball out quick. They tackled. But, I mean, that interception that Diggs makes, like, next time the Cowboys have issues at receiver, uh, you know. I mean, he, Tracking the ball. He, yeah. yeah he, I mean, he is yeah. a and that's really, where he's, really good. I think that's where he's at his best, too, because anytime you get him in a situation where he can just turn into a receiver, yeah. and, and that typically is when he's just running downfield, and he turns, finds the ball, he tracks it, 
He's going to make that catch. Those are the kind of plays where I think he's at his very, very best. And to me, like, I don't know why teams are challenging him like that. Nine routes, routes I wouldn't challenge him like that because he's, no. he's going to have a good shot at the ball. Let them keep, <laughs> but, keep challenging. But it works when you when you go up against their best receiver. Because, yeah. the, you know, I mean, can you imagine the press conference where they're like, well, why, why didn't they get, you know, why didn't you get Keenan Allen the ball today? Or why didn't you get, you know, A.J. A. Brown the ball? And it's like, well, you know, digs. I mean, the, no, yeah. no offensive coordinator. They can still got to try. All it, yeah. have, they're all arrogant enough. We're like, we're, we're, we're we like our guy. You know, we like our guy one on one. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. And I know I was very critical last week of Gallimore. I thought this was one of his. <laughs> yeah. Almost yeah. like he heard you. Yeah, it, it was. It was one of those games where you know he he played with physicality up front, and you know, you're kind of saying okay, and you wonder they're 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 doing a decent job of playing the run in the middle. But you know the stuff on the edge is is going to be a problem for them. I mean, th- they did a much better job in the second half defending the run mm-hmm. on the edge because all of a sudden it was like, okay, Barr doesn't get blocked, Wilson doesn't get blocked, Diggs doesn't give ground, Vanderish doesn't get caught inside. There was there were some times where they were they looked like everybody was supposed to be where they f- were supposed to be fit, but then you get blocked, you know, and now it now the ball's to the edge and it's a problem. Second half did a much better job of getting guys up the field and forcing the ball back inside and guys not being but Gallimore was a big part of what they were doing with the defensive line. The pressure that he was able to get, the the way he was able to play the run when the ball was to the inside. So, you know, I got to be fair about that cuz yeah. he was not very good against the Giants on Monday night. He was really good against the uh Commanders yesterday. I, I think it's it has to be said too like you know he's super bad out there. I mean, there's no doubt Micah Parsons is a, is a phenomenal player, maybe the best player in the NFL in defense. And we'll find out, you know, this week with the Rams coming. You know, Donald might have something to say about that. But when you put Micah Parsons on the edge every time, I obviously the, the Washington's like, okay, listen. I mean, you're a linebacker slash undersized defensive end, and yes, you have power, but we, we got to run at you. Like that, and, and and he wasn't the best at, at it. I think they they cleaned it up, but you know that's one thing to kind of neutralize this is with with Parsons staying on the edge so much. And I thought in the second half we saw him rush a little bit more yeah. from the flip side and the middle. But he stayed on that left side, and they felt like they were running at him. You know what I don't know, I, and I I, I want to ask somebody about this is you saw that happen. Uh, you saw it happen with him. You saw it, ha- it happen with Fowler a couple uh-huh. of times. Yeah, they went up field. And what I don't know is are they coaching these guys? Go ahead and go upfield. Our linebackers are going to fill that gap, the and the problem. linebackers are getting blocked. Because I saw in That's a couple plays, yeah. the linebackers aren't getting off their block. So I don't know if it was that they're asking the defensive end to actually hold that edge, in which it's their fault, or they're saying, you guys go ahead and get upfield. Our linebackers are going to fill those gaps, and the linebackers aren't getting I'll there. Tell I know you what, who's at fault here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, because there were a couple times it looked like, you'd like you're like you yelling at Vanderish, like, get over there, get over there, get over mm-hmm. there. But then you're watching, like, okay, the, the end is getting knocked wide. And now your Vanderus is trying to like you know they're trying to hold the gap to inside of him, so he's trying to kind of squeeze it. Now the ball's bouncing, but you got this big gap, and you don't have a safety coming down in there right. too. So I mean, so they, one of the three is not yeah, doing what they're supposed to do. Because like which I say, one. I'm yeah. sitting there, I'm sitting there like. Clayton, get over. And I'm like, no, wait a minute. He's squeezing. You know, they got the A gap taken care of. He's squeezing the B. Oh, my gosh. The end has got kicked way out of the C. So now the space is so much that even if Vanderish were to get there, he can't cover. But I'll tell you what they're doing to Parsons now that that is going to be a problem for, for him. Is on, they're cutting him. They're cutting him. They're yeah. cutting him now, Chopping. and they're, and they're going to start. And everybody's going to start going at his knees, and because that's what they were doing on those screens. No matter where he was, if he was to the side of the screen, immediate cut block. Immediate, and he, so now, not rushing, hands, hands down, hands down, hands protect down, himself. protecting his knees. Yeah. And so that was one of those times where I'm going. I was watching the tape. I'm like, I counted three different times where Sam Cosme is chopping at his knees, and he's not rushing. Or he's not. I mean, he's playing off the block and then and then redirecting to the ball. But it. But it. But you could tell he's like, bro, stay away from my knees. Of course. Yeah. And what another thing that does too is that they, they throw it over his head. He's not the tallest guy, yeah. anyways. Yeah. Right. So now when he's going down, make sure his you know yeah. his hands are down too to to protect himself. That's an easy throw over. I think I saw that two games in a row. Yeah. I've seen teams kind of throw over him like that. How but, do you combat that? Like, is there anything you can man. do? I mean. 
It's it's tough. I mean, it's tough because there. You know, we we saw what happened to Thibodeau with the Giants in the preseason. They did the same thing. They chopped yeah. Armstrong coming across on a play. Same situation. Armstrong is like spinning on one leg, and you're like, you know, like, he'll, oh, look out. But yeah, they, I, I, he'll hurdle him. Yeah, that's what he'll do. Well, it's he'll just jump over hurling. them and make a play, and it'll be the play of the week. That's <laughs> yeah. what'll happen. Well, it, it, but it, it's something he's going to have to deal with now because yeah. they're going to get on tape. Like, okay, how do you slow him down? Take the ball at him, but also chop him while you're taking the ball at him as well. Yeah. Well, did and not, guys, uh, did you guys notice him like dealing with something? Not, His back. He he something was off, and you could tell this was, and it wasn't even towards the end of the game. It yeah. was early second quarter. He was just like. The, the snap was going to happen, and he wasn't even ready just yet. He just looked like, you know, when you're a little just drained of some sort. He was still, I mean, he was still Might playing the, Monday night the game whole time. Too, yeah. But he, he just looked like juiced out for that game. Something was wrong with him. I don't know if it was more physically rather than he just looked tired. And maybe it was that short week coming out. But He plays a lot of snaps. Yeah. Yeah. He He plays a lot of snaps. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you talk about those defensive linemen that get to rotate. He didn't get to rotate. Not much. Yeah, and, and, what, they, and when they and when they and when they don't have him out there, we're all like, "Where is he? Where, why? What, what, yeah, you know, Christy, yeah. give me a report. Something right. wrong. You know, you're. you're do I need to go to the bathroom now? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, yeah exactly. it's a good time. And then one of the things I do worry about for him is he's getting a lot more attention from from yeah. offenses. He's getting those double teams. He's getting those chips. He's getting like people going at his knees. I do wonder if at some point it's going to wear him down a little bit and they're going to the Cowboys are going to have to think about how do we manage his Whoa. time so he doesn't get worn down to the point cuz like you said he's not the biggest guy no. certainly not to be playing defensive I, end he, for an entire game. He, another thing that he needs to to work on and this isn't pick on Micah Day or yeah. anything like that but he needs to realize that that this is successful like like and, it, and it's a tough balance because you want the lion to stay hungry all the time. But, the, you know, they're teasing him in the locker room because he doesn't get a sack. And it's almost like, are you, is it that big a deal to get a sack that he had when he missed? Yeah. Or, are you yeah, going to play did. out yeah. of your game yeah. now to he try to get that? He had one last week, too. They missed yeah. a couple of those. Yeah. Like, like they, they got to be happy about this. He oh, needs yeah. to be happy. And I hope he is. But yeah. I get the sense that even he gets frustrated because he didn't get a sack and all that. Well, the way he sounded in the locker room last night, it did make me seem like he had perspective. That's like great. The way he was talking was like, man, our unit. And he was talking a lot Good. about the, the unit. scoring. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think is, the way he's looking at it is the right way. I, I right hope so. And, yeah. I, and, I, and they, they playfully tease with him. And whatever yeah. pokes the bear or the right. lion, whatever gets him going, that's <laughs> fine. But, like, you know, the, he's a huge part of this. He mm-hmm. is. He, he creates all of this stuff for the other guy. I don't practice him a couple of days during the week, maybe a day during the week. I, week. I mean, whatever yeah. day you determine that he could take off and just stand there and watch all day and heal up, let me have a few of those days. Listen, I mean, you can, you know, hey, just watch what we're trying to do here. But he's so involved in all the scheme packages. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay, they're going to line him up with – with Tank on that side too, and then Fowler on that. I mean, they're going. They create things for mismatches. So if he doesn't practice, are they able to work on? Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's kind of like Amari Cooper. When Amari Cooper didn't practice, do you confidently call a play that he doesn't practice? You know, I mean, oh, well, Amari's good enough; he should be able to run the play. Well, no, that's why you practice so you run the play. Right. If it's a combination routes and you know things like that, so. You just got to find time for him. You just got to say, listen, bro, stay away from the game today. Just stay away from the game because uh, they, they are they're, they're now taking they, – offenses are desperate playing against him. They're desperate yep. to try and do anything they can to stop him from wrecking shop. All right, we're going to take our first break. We're going to come back. We're going to dive a little more into the offense. There were a couple of different performances we need to talk about. Uh, we'll be right back. DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. What do you call a group of grown men and women with their faces painted silver and blue who get together every week to share a three-hour-long ritual of jumping, sinking, and toasting Miller Lite and 10-gallon hats while yelling, how about them cowboys? You call it Miller Time in Dallas. 
Here's to the Cowboys. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2021 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. When you build, you start with the foundation. And home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America N.A. Equal housing lender. Credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Back to the break. Whether you're watching from home or cheering in the stands, SLR Lenses will let you see every exciting play. Book an appointment. Your local SLR experts find the perfect lens for you. See more, do more, SLR. Welcome back. It is the second segment of the break. Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're discussing the Cowboys win over the Washington Commanders. They win 25-10. to 10. This segment is brought to you by Blockchain.com. All right, let's talk about the offense. Cooper Rush yesterday was 15-27, 56% completion rate, 223 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, a 107.5 rating he becomes the first quarterback in club history to win his first four games as a starter uh pretty impressive uh what was the what do you think is the key to his success so far well i mean he's he's taking care of the ball statistically um he had a couple interceptions but you know i, I mean he doesn't need to be thrown off his back foot i can tell you that he, he was to, thrown he, a lot he, he did a couple foot, of that yeah. but but i mean he makes smart d- decisions and also he's a good deep ball thrower and and i thought that and brian and i talked about this or after the game is that this is where mccarthy comes into play yeah because mccarthy studies officials he knows what crews call yeah. and he threw the ball deep a lot knowing that it that good things were going to happen either you catch it it's not 50 50 that that the ball gets down there it's it's more 70 30 you catch it or pi or whatever good things happen he's a good thrower and not only on that stat about first quarterback in cowboys history First quarterback in NFL history to have win his first four starts and a quarterback rating of 90 or above every time. So, yeah, the defense is helping him, but he's also making smart decisions where he's having good quarterback ratings as well. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Nick's right about that. I mean, you have to study these officials. You have to understand if crews are going to call PIs excessively, and this was a crew that was going in, you knew that. That, that this was a that this usually was a uh, when you when you look at these officials there's certain things that you can kind of tag them with, and I I applaud McCarthy and those guys for being able to say hey max protection let's see if these guys can hold up and once they kind of figured out too that Michael Gallup was going to be able to have the separation felt comfortable running hey by all means send him on the nine route send him on the go see if you get tied up I mean they sent C D Lamb down. One time on a, you know, it was really a good play by the the corner from the Commanders. But that's what you got to do. You got to take some shots down the field, and you know you're going to get a 38 yard penalty. I mean, hey, a 38 yard penalty is just as good as a 38 yard run. You know, as long as they give you the yards and, and give you the field position, why not play to that strength? So that's where I think Cooper Rush throws a really good ball. I was really surprised on the one pass early in the game that Noah Brown didn't adjust well enough on it. You know, I thought mm-hmm. maybe that was an opportunity for a big play, but just didn't adjust well enough to it. But uh, by all means, learn about these officials, try and take advantage of the situation. Yeah, some of those deep throw, I've, I'm watching the game, I'm like, oh, beautiful. That was beautiful. What a beautiful pass. But credit to the line, the O-line, I think yep. they've been giving him, making him what he, I'm not going to say they're making him what he is. They're just allowing him to process things and make those throws. Like, he's not constantly under pressure. He's not constantly having to get outside the pocket and run for his life. So, again, I think the O-line has been doing a great job and helping him out in being able to carry this team along while Dak is out. So, yes, I love everything that I've been seeing with Cooper Rush, but after yesterday, it made me wonder. I'm like, hmm, with what the O-line is doing – 
I I think Dak would be able, and I don't mean to start that whole conversation right now again, but I just, it makes me wonder and think about, you know, Dak would be able to play a lot better than what we saw that first game of the of the season. And I think he would be able to, because I think a lot of people, the, the comments that you see is that, oh, Dak is not going to be able to do what Cooper Rush is doing. But with, yeah, which is insane. <laughs> but crazy. I think you plug in Dak, a healthy Dak, full on healthy with his thumb and everything. I think he would be able to give you what Cooper Rush has been giving well, you and the help that Kellen Moore has been able to create for the quarterback position. Yeah, I think you're going to this this will be a, a big big test for Cooper Rush this week cuz I've been told it's unrealistic that Dak is going to play this week. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. look for Cooper Rush to go to as you guys load up and go to Southern California. This will be a good matchup for him. You know, when we get into it, we start to talk about the defenses and the things that he'll have to do. You know, I, I, they're going to have to put up some points in this football game, I believe. You know, I haven't seen a whole lot. We'll see the Rams play tonight against the 49ers. We'll, you know, get an idea about that. But, yeah, this is going to be probably the stiffest test that he will have when it comes to he's going to have to play in this game. Because you are playing against, you know, they, they did a nice job against Cincinnati. That was a Super Bowl team. Well, here's the team that won the Super Bowl. So go find a way to win this game. But you're going to get Cooper Rush this week is what you're going to do. And we'll see if he can if he can pull it off. You say that you're going to get Cooper Rush. Like, you're going to get, like, he is what he is this week. Like you're gonna... No, no, you're going to get him to play quarterback this week. Oh, oh it's, yeah, 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 Dak, yeah, Dak, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, at post game, I was told it was unrealistic that Dak was going to play this and, week, and that makes me wonder. You know, unrealistic, like no, no chance he's going to play in yeah. in seven days. So, had four, they been losing fourteen maybe? days? Like, like if you're if you're absolutely not on seven days, I mean, yeah. fourteen seems like a stretch. Well, I think a lot could happen in fourteen days. Like, sure. The reason why I think it's unreal, in my opinion, the reason why I think it's unrealistic for this week is because he really hasn't practiced. He really hasn't been doing much from the standpoint of actually throwing the ball. Um, so I think, though, this week, let's say, for example, he does toward the, the the end of this week, he's actually out there and throwing, and they're like, okay, yes, Yeah, exactly. And they're like, okay, he's starting to – so by then, then you give him a week of practice next week, yeah. then maybe he is. I'm just saying, like, right now, it doesn't sound like he's done any of that to this point, so no. it seems unrealistic that he can do that. I never heard week. the word close. Okay. You know, I never heard the word close. I mean, yeah. it was I was asking because I thought Jerry in the post game did a – I think he did a good job of not – really selling it like you know he kind of was very non-committal about it but you know and you guys live here in this building you talk to people as well you know the the one thing that I was told was like no it's it's not a realistic situation this week because of the things we talked about the practice the grip strength and all those things I feel that had they been losing you would be hearing the word be playing close. next week yeah. you'll be hearing mm -hmm. the word close yeah. um yeah, do exactly we have time right. to ask a question yeah quick? sure I was going to ask because a lot of I feel that a lot of the times that we're watching the games uh, on the offense, they get the ball moving, they're moving, they're moving, then they just completely hit a wall as they approach the the red zone. So, what what would you point out the biggest problem as to why that is happening? Well, I, I mean, honestly, when you in this game, I mean, you can't run the football. Yeah. Like it's even harder to run. Down there in the red zone, so you got it. You got to take your deep shots, and that's why it always. That's why I always say first and goal in the ten is the toughest, toughest to score because deep ball is out of the out of the the equation, obviously, unless you want to throw it to Rowdy. So I mean, like it's right there. You've got to you've got to play, and you've got to be able to push them back, and they couldn't push anyone back. So no. I thought they did a pretty good job down in there. I mean, but because it, it's hard to run at the fifty, it's definitely hard to run inside the twenty. Yeah, Monday night we talked about, and Nick brought it up in our show on. Tuesday was about how they got against the Giants. They got down there and ran the ball, what, three straight times? And yeah. they ran it in. I think what happened, the touchdown, when you go back and you watch your all 22, the touchdown you're going to see to Gallup was a really good design because what they were able to do was, and this is where I know I've been critical of Kellen Moore because you see guys like Sean McVay with the Rams, he will get Cooper Cup on linebackers mm -hmm. and you're now you're like you're running against a linebacker and down there and that what that's what happened he got Gallup on Holcomb the linebacker by by design by formation and now all of a sudden Holcomb's you know inside leverage is you know great but outside leverage is terrible and that's where you know, you watch the ball. I mean, the route goes inside and then breaks, and now you got the quarterback rolling in the pocket, mm -hmm. 
and he and he's able to make that throw. You need more of that. You need you know you talk about running the football and then better design of how to get your guys in situations where okay we're going to spread you out a little bit and we're going to make sure that your linebacker is covering our wide receiver and then trying to stay in position to do that. More of that would be great in my book. Yeah, you know that that would be the the, the mm-hmm. that would be the the fix that I saw that he had uh, yesterday. Yeah, I'm glad you called that out because we give Kellen a lot of flack on the show. I, I, and I, I think I do dude, a, lot. a lot of people do, I do for not scheming things up to yeah. get his playmakers in position to make plays. That was a really and, great example of that. And uh, another one. He did. And another one coming out of the uh, third quarter, going into the fourth quarter. I mean, they, they sat there. It's basically a timeout. They yeah. come right out of that. The first play, they scheme it up where Schultz, and you got to give Schultz credit because he's ran down the right, field. Yeah. He ran it down the field, right. right in the scene, took the safety with him. Guess what? One on one. One to to C D yeah. Lamb. I mean that that was obviously called. And he's from got the, the inside, so it was got, perfect. Done, he, perfect he, done, exactly. Yeah. A great throw. You yeah. got Nick's right there because curl the safety is he's he's so focused on mm-hmm. Schultz running vertically that it it, it it kept it gave enough space to allow C D to run and then the corner on the other side was too wide. Yep. So there was that natural seam where he was able to throw the ball. Well designed play. Yep. All right, let's talk about the running game. Let's talk about Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard. Yesterday, Zeke Woo. was 19 carries for 49 <laughs> yards, a 2.6 average. Pollard, 8 carries for 6 <laughs> yards, 0.8 average. Uh, why didn't the running game work yesterday? What Jonathan, was the biggest problem? Jonathan Allen <laughs> is your biggest problem. <laughs> Two and words, Deron Jonathan Payne Allen. was a pain in the what? Yeah. And and both those guys were – I mean, they, they, was, they were as good – as we've seen them before, I mean that that was as Montez dominant. Montez Sweat played well. Sweat, I mean, they, they're Ridgeway. Front. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what Ridgeway did, but um, he was not bad. He no, was out there. no, he's he'll fit in. He'll fit in good with that team. Yeah. I mean, you know that that was just an unfortunate thing. Cowboys wanted them, but it just that they have injuries, and when you have injuries, you've got to figure out how to how to get around it. And you had to they try to steal it. Practice squad spot and Washington needed help. Good, good move for them. But I thought that they just couldn't run the ball as well because they, they didn't they didn't win the physical battles. Um, and I think that's kind of what what we see with Pollard and, and Zeke. Yeah, Pollard's great on the outside and he can do all that stuff. But running him in the middle like that, it's tough sledding. I mean, he didn't even average a yard. So you know, this is why they he'll have better days. I mean, for sure, and, and Zeke will too. But this is kind of why. You know it, the thunder and lightning situation is what it is because you got to get some tough running. I thought Zeke ran okay, but his stats don't really look good. They struggled because McGovern was playing in the game and coming back from the. He injury. seemed hurt to me. He wasn't moving he very well. He did not look good to me. He struggled. He struggled with his movement and struggled with his power and couldn't sustain anybody. They they struggled a little bit with with Biotish at center. Zach Martin actually had a couple of them where he was he lost a little bit of his uh, you know the the you know the, being able to stick onto his guy, they just couldn't and and there was a couple of times too where guys like Steele was in good position and the guy went back door on him and now he's trying to adjust back and then there's really no place for the ball to cut and then there's the tackle right there they. They played it really. They were there was time. They had an eight man box one time, and Dallas ran it inside. And I'm like going, okay, well, Coop, it's eight men in the box. You've got you're not going to be able to block all these guys. Mm-hmm. And they still ran the ball. That was one of those things where I think he would have checked out if he, if, he, if he today when he gets and watches film, he's going to go, ah, oh, damn, what was yeah. I doing? I mean, it was four down and four behind, and they were not going to let you run the ball in that particular play. But again, once you know you look at Zeke. The third one, he continues to have the success doing that. That to me. But also, too, real quick, and I know I'm talking a lot here. I'm sorry. But the thing about it is they put Farniak in the backfield. That's tell- Now, Farniak ran a route one time on a play, on a play that went to Noah Brown for a big catch. Yeah. He ran a route, but – but Ferguson stayed in and blocked the tight end, which was hilarious. You see Ferguson's, like, blocking on the end, and then here's Farniak running a route, like, you know, he's, like, up the field, kind of like, eh, throw me the ball, and the ball goes over the top. But that's the kind of, I mean, it's crazy. I want to see that. Yeah, it, it's, 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 you can watch the play. But the, it's, it's funny to me that, that you put the fullback in there, and it's, it's just a telegraph. We're gonna run the ball here. Yeah. We're gonna run, but that one time they threw the pass and you know able to make a play. But it was funny to see tight end stay in and offensive of linemen go out and run the route. Peters, Peters looked forty a couple times. He looked forty in that game. He sure did. 
Yeah. Sure did. Did he, he looked more forty than he looked like a nine time Pro Bowler. But of course he, I know he's playing guard. That's not his position yeah. that he's used to playing. Tough but guys are tough. It man. was tough. It was God, not it tough. was not the best. I, I I still wonder how this all thing's gonna shake out. McGovern McGovern, you know, healthy and you know, it's just Aaron Donald coming up this week, so I think they can figure it out. <laughs> figure I mean, it out. the fact that they only gave up one sack, because I, I agree with you guys, I don't think the offensive, play, game, offensive line played particularly well, but they ended up only giving up one sack. I do think Cooper Rush, as he's done since he's been in there, he's really good at getting the ball out. Yeah. And so I think it doesn't expose him as much as maybe you'll see from other quarterbacks. Uh, but all things being considered, this was not a great game for the offensive to line. To me, to me, and uh, the way I see it, to me, they played a well game. As far as the passing game, the running game, that was a whole different thing. The, they could not run the ball. And this that's, this is why this win makes it that much more impressive to me. Because sometimes we see when they do not have that kind of balance, when they can't run the ball, they end up losing the game. And, for example, at the tight end posi- position, Dalton Schultz did not have a good game. Didn't have a, didn't have a catch. He didn't, but even then, like, he didn't block things, what got caught on the hole. Some of the things yeah. that he yeah. was he doing, band, he, yeah. it, it was not a good day for him. So, Keeping that in mind and just the the very few weapons that Cooper Rush and Kellen Moore had to work with last night and they got away with the win, got two touchdowns. So to me that that was impressive. And th- this is the only reason why I keep giving the the O line so much credit is the fact that you didn't see Cooper Rush just having to run for his life all night. They were just giving him time. And yes, Cooper Rush Credit to him, too. His legs, his feet, he can run. He can figure out where to go. So, to me, that's a win in that aspect. I think that we'll see how they improve in the running game. But when you get away with without the running game working, 0.8 average for Tony Pollard, that's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, but, but I think I think the thing to consider here, and I think it's, it's kind of how they're going <laughs> <laughs> – I think it's how they're going to play football is – you look at the total number of carries relative to the total number of passes, they're right there at about 50-50. It's yeah. 29 rushes. Two of those rushes were were, were rush, um, and so those are probably not called runs. So you're looking at about 27-27, right? You're looking at about a 50-50 split between run-pass. And by the way, I think that's how they think they're going to have to play football right now. Mm. Because of the fact that they've got such a great defense, I think they look at it and say, hey, we need to keep the other team off balance, which means that even sometimes, as you said, Brian, yeah. we might have an eight-man box we're still going to run still the ball run, yeah. because for us, as we saw earlier this season, like you don't want to leave your defense out there too much. Yeah. So you have to take the time. You have to, sometimes you have to run into bad situations. But the point is, you're going to run the ball, and we're going to trust the fact that, as I was saying to you, Nick, in the press box, like a punt is not a bad thing with right. this kind of defense. Sometimes yeah. you'll take a few plays. You'll take some time off the clock. You punt the ball. Yeah. You let your defense do its job. I'll tell you what. When you punt the ball to your own twenty-eight and don't give up points, that's, you got a pretty damn good defense. That's really good. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, and, and then when the punter messes it up, yeah, <laughs> the I mean, the punter's like, been hitting like yeah. 52, 56, 58 yards. He punts one twenty-two, and you're like going, "This is not good." And then you don't give up points. That shows you got a pretty I mean, damn good defense. And they they went for a field goal. I mean, they went right. for a fourth down because yeah. they they had to. But still, I mean, they got down there to the nine. Good sack on third down yeah. to push it back fourth and fifteen. I mean, it, it's uh, like we said. I mean, it's been but don't break. But they're not been in a whole lot, and it's it's really impressive. And you know that's what we said after they they played Brady and Burrow. It's like okay, now you get Daniel Jones and you get and you get uh, Wentz, and they they've taken advantage of that. Yeah, yeah. Now it's Stafford and Hurts. So you know, it, it, it up. It steps up. All right, we're going to take our final break. We're going to come back. We're going to have these guys tell us who they think are the players of the game. Each of them will give you one. We'll be right back to DallasCowboys.com radio. The season is finally here. For months, we've been gearing up to win. Now it's time for the team that performs on any field, United Ag and Turf. With John Deere zero turns for mowing, compact tractors for loading, mini excavators for digging, Gator utility vehicles for hauling, implements for grading, hay tools for baling, United Ag and Turf for winning the official ag and turf equipment supplier of the dallas cowboys visit unitedagandturf.com for more todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable and now todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour <laughs> but the good news is todd has at&t 5g that is fast reliable and secure and he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew at&t 5g Fast, reliable, secure. 
It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Little sweet! Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper's on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. When you build, you start with the foundation. And home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America N.A. Equal housing lender. Credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Back to the break. Get a chance to get some single game tickets, limited tickets for the remaining home games of the 2022 Dallas Cowboys season at AT&T Stadium are available now. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash tickets or SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. Welcome back. Final segment of the break live from SWBC Mortgage Studios at the start. We are presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Let's jump into players of the game. Let's go around the table. Everybody give me one. Amber, let's start with you. Michael Who's your Gallup. player of the game? To me, is Michael Gallup. He's a guy that, um, you know, didn't have a training camp. He was out for a really long time, and he got in here. And even though I know he, the kind of talent he has, it's one of those things that you always have some kind of doubt on how quickly they can be impactful inside in the game. And he, he, even when he didn't have the ball, he was. He was drawing penalties. He was helping that way. That touchdown to me was so impressive in the way that Cooper Rush was able to get the ball to him and he was able to catch it. So to me, he was player of the game because not only what he did in that game, but what he was able to put on film for the next opponent coming up. He's going to bring some attention to him and he's going to keep making an impact on the offense and helping the other guys around him as well. Deron Bland. Mm, I like it. Deron Bland found out he was going to start five, maybe five minutes before. Well, they they go to warm up. They go at. They get back from warm up. He comes in. They walk in and say, "You're starting nickel corner today." Oh, okay. I guarantee you, Deron Bland did not get a lot of work this week playing nickel corner with uh, Jordan Lewis out there, and they didn't practice a whole hell of a lot either. To be honest with what you, what happened with Jordan? Do we know? It, the, I mean, I know he, growing, he had growing the, did it game. happen in pregame? Yeah. Or pre-game, was it something pregame. Okay. Right. So all of a sudden they come in. They tell the kid he's going to start. He, he did a great job in that football game. That is not easy to play that, that corner spot, especially with the receivers that they have over there at the Commanders. And then he gets the interception. Great read. They're playing zone. He's right where he needs to be. He sees that what Carson Wentz is going to do. He drives on the ball, gets in front. You know, the, uh, some of the initial runs that were run at him in the first half, he kind of struggled with a little bit. But second half, he was far better playing in that game. Hats off to him. Helmet sticker, whatever you want to give him for, uh, for how he played in that football game. <sighs> But two, I got two here. Give, them, give but, us both. Well, um, you know, I, I'd like to say Diggs because I thought Diggs played a great game and really kind of shut down their best player. But you know, as Brian said, when you average two yards a carry, and I mean, this thing is supposed to keep afloat here with Cooper Rush because they got to help him out. You got to run the ball. You got to play good defense. They couldn't run the ball yet. They win a game by two scores. My my MVP of the game is Cooper Rush. Uh, he's four four in a row of as a starter, three this year, and he's just kind of finding his rhythm. Offense is getting better, but they were really one dimensional, and he they had to pass the ball through it, and they were able to do it. So uh, to me, it's it was Cooper Rush. Want to give us your second? Well, I, uh, Diggs was. I oh, said oh, Diggs, sorry, Diggs I was one Diggs that I really would like to say Diggs, yeah. but and I thought he played great. But I, I it's it's Cooper for me. Yeah, I'm excited to see what Dan Quinn does with Donovan Wilson and Curse both. Yeah, it, and you know now now the how Quam- you yeah and exactly how do you get these Quam- guys played well? Yeah, how do you get these guys on the field, especially guys that can tackle? You know, and you're going to need that if people are going to start trying to run the ball on you. You're going to need guys that make plays. Wilson. It's physical, curse physical. They don't miss And Hooker played pretty well. He sure did. And his safety's well, played great Well, yesterday. I'll tell you what, the one play that went down, they, we thought it might have been an intercept. You talk about Wilson. They're playing four across at the sticks, and the ball's going deep, and who's running from the hash? 
you know, to, to get the, on the coverage on McLaurin down the field, it's, it's Wilson. So not only was he just like a physical player down, he was a deep player right. back and made a huge play in that game. Who's your player's game? My player's Maher. Uh, uh-huh. Amber Amber started the show talking about him. He had kicks of 53, 45, 28, 29. Really, if you look and at And a great first, tackle in the open field that saved two points. Absolutely. And if you look at the first quarter of the season, um, outside of, say, a Micah Parsons, I don't know that you could say that there's any player that's been more consistent during the first quarter of the season and made a difference for this team than Brett Maher. He has been really, really good for them, has scored a ton of kicks and made kicks that are 50-plus. Like we're, we're talking about some really tough kicks that most kickers in the league would struggle to have the percentage that he does, uh, and he's been making those kicks. I, I think he has been phenomenal. I think it was the first time they had a kickoff return against him. He'd had he'd put every yeah. ball mm-hmm. out of the end zone, and then they brought one back on him yesterday. But up until then, through four games, I mean, he, he's been putting every ball he's in the end zone. Football, yeah. yeah, I got asked this on the radio today on 1053 The Fan, and I said the question was is which player has been the most surprising this year after through four games? Is it is it Cooper Rush, Maher, or Tyler Smith? Hmm. And and you know, I in order, you know, I put I put Cooper Rush. I mean, I would I wouldn't expect this, but I mean, they're all great great choices there. I yeah. mean, all three of those guys. Well, you think about where we were back in Oxnard. Oh, the thought was watching those kicking guys. is going to be a problem this year. Yes. It is going to be a significant yes. problem. And then when they made kind of changes and all that, then you're like, okay, well, we're kind of back to where we were yeah. a couple years ago. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's going to be better. But the guy's been phenomenal. Well, He's played really good, good football. Well, see, the thing about it is, you bring back Maher, and you're like, okay, you couldn't scout better. You yeah. couldn't. You couldn't. You. Why do you have to bring back somebody that we've already seen get? sent away yeah and sometimes you send them away and they come back and they work out better but that was the one where i was like i was proud of them for making the decision that the kicking game was not good enough they could have just sat there and ranting with those guys and been just, okay hey we're not we're, we like our guys we, we like our guys, our guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but to bring back maher and have him to have success you have to give him credit for that yep all right appreciate you guys joining us we'll back tomorrow we'll do a big picture look around the nfc and really around the nfc east all of a sudden nfc east is looking pretty good mm-hmm. we'll talk about that tomorrow for nikki and Brian Broaddus and Amber Garcia. I am Derek Eagleson. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!